Okay, as parents, we all know that kids will misbehave. But is your child maybe misbehaving more than others? What's the best way to handle their misbehavior? Here to help uh, give us some insight is psychologist and mom, Amy Trout. Good morning. Hey. Welcome back. Thank you. This is a good one. I'm excited for this topic. You're excited for this topic, yeah. I know, as well. So, and I do think, what, what age range are we talking about with misbehaving and kind of diving into really right. looking at what they're doing and what as parents how we react yeah I mean obviously you want to deal with misbehavior at different ages a little differently mm -hmm. but for these categories we're looking at kids that are kind of out of those toddler years okay uh, some of it will work for the toddlers but for the most part little little kids you know three and under four mm -hmm. and under they need a lot of just a lot of good stuff poured yeah. into them all the time as much as we're able to give I wouldn't mm -hmm. say limit you know attention giving as much as we're able to it's okay. kind of hard so this is kind of elementary age school um, yeah. and on yep so let's talk about let's dive it we have a lot to get into and uh, so the, the the focus here is why kids misbehave there's right. a couple key points that you say we need to focus on number one right. is attention which we've heard that before what the kids just need attention right and kids do need attention the problem is is when they vie for attention you know when they're either acting out or disturbing in ways that they know is not okay. Mm -hmm. um, do they know that that's why they're doing it because they need attention? Or? I don't know that it's always conscious. Yeah. No, no, I don't okay. think so. And it's okay to need attention, right? We just don't want to reinforce negative seeking behaviors. So when we feel annoyed, you know, that's a good cue that our kid is seeking attention when we're okay. like, oh, what's going on? So we tend to remind them, remember when mommy's on the phone, you know, whatever we end up doing. Those aren't, that's the natural thing to do, but okay. they're not going to be very effective. The kid may calm down a little bit, and, but then they're going to resurface. That, that behavior is going to come up again and again and again. So at the end, we'll talk about some alternatives to the natural yes. reaction. We will have some hope at the end of the segment. We're going to dive into first kind of the common things that kids yeah. and parents are doing. Right. So that's attention. Uh -huh. Number one, you say power, or number two, power. Right. So when you're feeling angry at your kid's behavior, if you have an angry reaction uh -huh. and you feel like you either need to fight back, sort of get in a verbal tussle, uh -huh. or just quit, does I, I quit, throw your hands yeah. up and walk away. That's a power struggle. That shows that they're doing something because they're feeling like their need to somehow control a situation or, or be in charge of a situation is, is, uh -huh. is big. Typically, they may back down if you fight them on something, but you're going to get a passive aggressive, sort of a yeah. defiant compliance. We've all seen it in our uh -huh. kiddos. Sure, I'll do that. And you see the face, <laughs> it's stony and it's done real halfway. You know, you're like, okay not an effective thing to do to tussle or to quit with when there's a power struggle. Okay, so don't do that. Number three, you say revenge. Yeah, some kiddos that feel hurt or unlovable, um, they might seek to hurt their parents or to hurt others. So if you feel hurt as a parent, um, you tend to want to maybe punish. So if you feel like they've done uh. something hurtful to you, just flat out blatantly hurtful, your first inclination is to kind of come down hard. Okay. Um, which often results in an escalation of negative behaviors later. So, so again, a lot of these things maybe just they may, you know, you may be able to quiet it down for just a second, yeah. but it resurfaces if you don't get to the bottom of yeah. maybe what's going Some on. Some alternative ways yeah. of managing as parents. And then display of inadequacy. Yeah, kids that really feel hopeless or just really ineffective as kiddos. They feel like they they really can't change. There's kind of no hope for them. This is a sad position for a kiddo to be in. They may display their inadequacy, leaving you as a parent going, ah, they are hopeless. You know, we've all yeah. heard people say, you're hopeless. I, well, I should give me an example of that display of inadequacy. So, for example, a kiddo that simply cannot get something done. You ask your kiddo to get their room clean. They putt, they putt, they putt, they putt. They, they just can't. They may clean it halfway or kind of mm -hmm. partially. They can't keep it clean. It's just sort of this, it's not Ongoing defined. It's, okay. not, it's just sort of this, I don't know where this goes. I don't, you know, this kind of depressed feeling of inadequacy, of hopelessness. Okay. We feel despair as parents, and we tend to sort of kind of cave in and go, yeah, it is kind of hopeless. I'm not even going to fight that struggle anymore. So what, they, maybe they just clean the room for, you know, parents just clean it for or them? Or they just, like, close the door, you know? I mean, okay. it's kind of these things where it's not really a power struggle. It's more sort of just okay. this... You know, it feels different than a yeah. kid that just refuses. Okay. So. Well, let's talk about now what we do. Let's talk about maybe some better ways to handle yes. if, if you see that some of your kids may be going through this. So we'll go back to attention, and you say positive behavior. Right. So you want to, as much as possible in the moment, ignore that vie for attention. I know it's not natural. It doesn't feel, you know, you want to nip things in the uh -huh. bud, right? But if you feel the kid vying for attention, as much as you're able, ignore the misbehavior. 
overall, try to really focus in on any positive behaviors you see. So um, even if they're tiny, like uh, I love the way you sat quietly while I was on my phone call, you could tell it was important. You know, you're giving them that attention in a really positive manner in a, maybe a different situation. Um, they may have bopped into your face mm -hmm. 15 times yeah. earlier when you're on a phone call and you just kept leaving the room and going from room to room to try to avoid giving in. So e any kind of cueing or kind of dancing with the issue is giving it attention. So it's uh. reinforcing that attention seeking behavior. Even if you get angry, mm -hmm. whew, they got that attention, they got that fix. You want to kind of ignore it as much as possible, okay. as much as you're able to, within reason and then really Which reinforce sees, from behind. Well, I was going to say positive reinforcement seems to be a good key factor, yeah. I think, in a lot of things. Power, you say, avoid fighting. Yeah, you really you want to not get sucked into that vortex of the power mm -hmm. struggle, right? Someone who wants to fight. Well. Never ends well. <laughs> so you want to really like just step back, try to really remove yeah. yourself from the situation, and enlist, like, support that child's need for power with... Um, in a separate situation, kind of as these preventative measures, whenever you need help or you want to enlist their cooperation with a task that they're good at, that builds up that sense of power in them. Each kid, you know, probably has a primary mode of sort of misbehaving, right? So figure out what your kid is doing mm -hmm. and then go, okay, this kid really kind of has this need for power. Let me put them in charge of this or, or bring them on board with this other task. Okay. To build that up. Before we run out of time, uh, yeah. revenge, you say thick skin, show love. Thicken your skin, don't get hurt. You need to really avoid getting stuck in feeling hurt as a parent, okay? The, these the kids are going to. They're going to beat bigger us up at person, times. Bigger yeah, really work on helping that child feel loved over time. And know that they are kids. Sometimes they're trying to Absolutely. figure out their emotions themselves. Absolutely. Uh, 30 seconds left. The last one, display of inadequacy. You say avoid criticism and pity. Yeah, really work hard to not criticize. It can be very easy with that kiddo that just refuses to clean the room and can't kind of get moving mm -hmm. to go, you never move, you never clean, you know. It can be really easy to kind of get in that trap. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then avoid all So, what also do you do and say? Can into... you go back to that positive behavior? Or... Yes. Any tiny, tiny, tiny movement in the right direction, you really want to praise. And okay. It has to be genuine. It has to come from a really place of genuine care. Well, as we close here, what's the take home? What do you want parents to keep in mind as they, I mean, this is a yeah. daily struggle that I know it's every hard. family has. Right. It's hard. You know, I think really going against the gut reactions is important for all of us yeah. and to be very thoughtful with how we're parenting our kids Just instead of kind take of going, a moment. yeah, instead of going with what it might feel like we should do or what we're programmed yeah. to do from our own ba background or histories, really kind of be careful and thoughtful about the way we move forward. I love it. Great advice, Amy. Thank you so much. We look forward to having you back. Thank I know we you. are going to delve in this uh, next time you're back a little yeah. bit further in some other uh, areas. Yep. So thank you, Amy. Thanks. We'll send over to Steph. Up next, declutter your home without emptying your wallet. How some simple reorganizing can re-energize your entire home and your family.